Hey everyone and welcome back to Pins on Places and back to our North Wales walking tour series. Join us today as we explore the beautiful Conway Castle. Constructed on the northwest coast of Wales to subdue rebellious Welsh princes, this castle is mesmerising with hills rising south and west. The castle was built directly onto exposed bedrock. This was to stop besiegers tunnelling beneath Conway's walls which was a common tactic in medieval siege warfare. When you walk through the gates of the medieval castle, you step back in time with one of the finest and best preserved castles in Britain. Constructed on the northwest coast of Wales to subdue rebellious Welsh princes, this castle is mesmerising with hills rising to the south and west. Conway Castle was built by King Edward I during his conquest of Wales between 1283 and 1289. Over the next few centuries, the castle played a huge and important part in several wars. It withstood the siege of Clewellyn in the winter of 1294-95 and acted as a temporary haven for Richard II in 1399. Conway Castle was built by King Edward I during his conquest of Wales between 1283 and 1289. Over the next few centuries, the castle played a huge and important part in several wars. It withstood the siege with Clewellyn in the winter of 1294 to 1295 and acted as a temporary haven for Richard II in 1399. It was also held for several months by the forces who were loyal to Owain Glyndor in 1401. Following the outbreak of the Civil War in 1642, the castle was held by forces loyal to Charles I, holding out until 1646 when it was surrendered to the parliamentary armies. In the aftermath of this, the castle was partially sighted by the parliament to prevent it being used in any further revolt. It was finally completely ruined in 1665 when all of its remaining iron and lead was stripped and sold off. Castles like Conway were masters of medieval engineering. Their towers were round and tough to break through with no corners to knock off and a castle within a castle defence that gave a place for the defenders, a place to retreat or just wait for more reinforcements. An interesting fact about Edward's castles were that they always had a water exit. This would have been for being able to supply from the river, but also an escape by the river, and this was all inside his planning. Historically, this area was dominated by De Gamwy Castle, a formidable fortress that was sited on a high volcanic rock overlooking the river. However, a siege demonstrated the weakness for this site and its position, meant that it was easy for the Welsh to cut off the garrison's access to the waterfront. This made the site most unsuitable for the English army, who were heavily reliant on the shipping of supplies from the Royal Depot at Chester. So Conway Castle was built as a direct replacement located on the shores of the River Conway. The castle itself is compromised of eight massive round towers that form a rectangle. The sheer size of the castle is outstanding. It's what I call a proper castle. The outer ward is where you would enter through, but the castle is split into two separate wards. Later on, we will show you. But if the outer ward was taken, defenders can go into the inner ward to fend off the attackers. You'll be able to notice the large windows on the right, designed for light and to look more impressive, unlike the other ones.
On the tops of the Stockhouse Towers, extra turrets have been built on the four towers of the inner ward to give lookouts a greater chance for spotting danger. Although the castle is now a shell, the structure of Conway's many different rooms can still be explored. Information boards detail its former use and dramatic art installations bring Conway's past back to life. The main towers reached a height of 21 metres and mostly two floors above, ground floor. They were connected by spiral staircases that you can climb today. The names of the towers reflect their original purpose. So there was a bakery with an oven, a pantry and a cellar dungeon intended for a prison. The views when wandering around the battlements are breathtaking. You're able to look out across land and sea, as well as looking down at the roofless shell of the castle's 125 foot Great Hall. The outer ward housed the Great Hall, kitchens, stables and prison. It is where the garrison lived and in 1284 this compromised 15 crossbowmen and 15 other servants. simple yet brilliant quote is found in the guidebook for Conway from Caddy saying Conway is by any of the standards one of the great fortresses of medieval Europe. Conway and Harlech are said to be the most impressive castles in Wales, both designed by James of St George. It is actually very reasonably priced to visit Conway Castle, one that is surely, we think, worth the money for the amount of time that you can actually spend here. There is plenty of paid parking right next to the entrance and shop, as well as an overflow car park, just around a five minute walk. Opening times are from 10 till four. And our tip is to book a slot when it opens as this castle is a very popular one and we can see why. As always, if you've enjoyed walking and exploring with us today, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel to keep us doing what we love. Till next time.